This is a biopod, an innovative system that allows us to generate free insect proteins and fats for our chickens using food waste, coffee grounds, and even manure. We recently posted a video about the biopod on social media, and we were overwhelmed with questions about the system. A biopod is an enclosed, self-contained system designed for the purpose of raising black soldier fly larvae from food waste, with the aim of producing a high-protein food source for chickens and other livestock. Biopods typically consist of a series of stacked trays or chambers Chambers, each containing a substrate of food waste and a colony of black soldier fly eggs or larvae. The larvae consume the food waste and grow rapidly, providing a highly nutritious protein source that can be harvested and fed to livestock. The biopod is designed to be a self-sustaining system with the larvae producing frass that can be used as fertilizer and the adult flies emerging from the pupa to continue the life cycle. A chicken's diet consists of three things, leafy greens, grains, and protein. It's quite easy to grow the first two, grains and leafy greens, but growing protein can be quite hard. That's where the biopod comes in. This biopod actually converts food waste into grubs, which we can then feed to our chickens and give them the protein they need. The really cool thing about the biopod is that it actually auto harvests the grubs for us. All the grubs collect themselves into a bucket. So all we have to do is put food waste inside, then pull out the bucket when there's lots of grubs in it. Here's how it works. On the inside, we put food waste and coffee grounds. The smell of the coffee grounds and food waste attract black soldier flies which enter through these PVC pipe openings on top. Once inside, the black soldier flies find these stacks of cardboard. Black soldier flies really like to lay their eggs in nooks and crannies, which the cardboard supplies. Therefore, all the black soldier flies lay about 700 eggs inside the cardboard. Those eggs then hatch and turn into larvae, which fall into the substrate below. Once all the larvae have eaten their fill and have matured, they start to travel upwards, and here's why. Black soldier flies need to find soil and stay in soil for about a month until they can transform into their final fly form. They know that they're not in soil. They know that it's a food source they're in, because after all, it is coffee grounds and food waste. They travel upwards on this ramp that we've made. The ramp goes right to this large hole, which then falls right into a bucket, which means only the mature grubs which we want are the ones being harvested, and they're doing it for us. Now on the front, we have these pipe openings, which allow for ventilation. On the back of the biopod, we have this tube coming out. The tube on the back ensures all the excess moisture comes out of the biopod, making sure the conditions within are correct. To make sure no ants or other critters get inside the biopods except for flies, we've made these water barriers underneath the legs. This ensures nothing can climb up them because they'll drown in the water. We'll now answer some common questions about the biopod. Question one. Do we feed the white larvae to the chicken or the black ones? The black larvae are ideal. You can feed both the chickens, but we aim to collect as many black larvae as possible and let the white larvae grow. As they mature, they produce more protein and more fat for the chickens. The white larvae are not yet fully matured. Question two, how often do you exchange the grounds? And what are the ideal moisture levels for inside the tote? We typically change the grounds about once per season, which is about once per year. The black soldier fly will eat the coffee grounds if other food sources are not available. The coffee grounds make a good backup food source. You can use manure, but we really recommend getting coffee grounds as they smell a lot nicer and you can get them for free from local coffee shops. You want the substrate, the coffee grounds, to be damp and moist. Not soupy, but not too dry. Question three. My chickens are in a small backyard coop. We don't have a ton of space and I don't want to attract flies to our backyard area, but I love this idea. My question is, does it smell and does it attract a lot of flies that linger around the area? When managed correctly, the biopod won't smell bad more than one to two feet away. You may get some other flies at first, but once the black soldier flies establish a colony, the other flies will disappear. The black soldier flies also eat the food very fast. So whereas the smell of the food on the inside might be strong at first, it will disappear. Question four, do you have any plans on the build and set up for the DIY biopod that you can share? Not yet, but we are planning on releasing some plans very soon. Question five, do snakes get into the biopod? While we have not had that issue, technically it could happen, but it's not something we've ever seen. Question six, can I make money selling the grubs I harvest from biopods? Probably. Grubly is a company that does just that. Grubly is a company in Atlanta, Georgia that was founded by two Georgia Tech students. They take food waste from other restaurants and businesses, raise black soldier flies, and sell them as chicken snacks. Question seven, does the biopod work in Montana? During the warm months, most likely. We don't have a land lab in Montana, However, black soldier flies are native to most of North America and breed during the warm months. For us, that starts about late April to early May. You can check out Paul Wheaton's work on Montana as he has many cool permaculture concepts tested in that climate. Question eight. Can you make a long form video on your DIY biopod? Absolutely. We'll be releasing that video this spring. Question nine. Is the cardboard you use for the biopods toxic? We use cardboard that is not printed with colored ink. The color inks and some other glues are the ones with the toxic elements in them. We feel good about using brown, non-printed cardboard from shipping boxes. 